Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a good one today. I'm Nick, and today I'm going to be reviewing the little film called Death Ship from 1980. But before I get into this overlooked horror flick, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. It really helps me out a lot, guys. You can also go check out my social medias and my other music channel if you like. All that will be down in the description, guys. Links to all those. Go check them out if you're interested. And let's dive into this flick. So Death Ship was released in 1980, it stars George Kennedy, Richard Krina, Nick Mancuso, and was directed by Alvin Rakoff. And right off the bat guys, I just want to say I love this poster right here. The 80s did it best with their posters. Sometimes the movies were complete shit, but we got these really amazing artworks for them. I just love it. So guys, the basic plot to this film is about a mysterious freighter that rams and sinks a modern day cruise ship whose survivors then climb aboard the freighter and discover that it is a World War II Nazi torture vessel. And before I go too deep into this review, guys, I just want to express my love for these types of horror flicks, for these open ocean uh, settings or taking place on a ship or whatnot. I love it. And I just think that we do not get enough of these type of flicks in the genre. Yeah, we get a few like Ghost Ship and Triangle, a few here and there, but... Uh, not enough in my opinion. <laughs> Even like regular movies that aren't horror that take place on ships are right up my alley. That's just, it's just my love interest, I guess. I mean, the whole premise of being out in the open ocean is creepy enough on its own. You throw in a Nazi torture vessel into the mix, <laughs> it gets real terrifying. And in a lot of ways, this Nazi torture vessel is very much like a character in this flick. It's a lot like The Shining, how the Overlook Hotel is pretty much like a character. The same for in this. Uh, it's haunted. It feels like it's watching the survivors when they board the ship. Like, it's just, that's in the cinematography as well. You see the camera, like, looking at them through the windows of the ship and that. And it feels like the ship is literally watching them. And of course, it is moving thing, things on its own, whether it's like dropping ladders or trying to knock people off the ship into the water or whatnot. Uh, the ship is evil as hell. And while there's not a whole lot of gore or violence in this flick, it's not like a slasher movie, but it is dripping with mood and atmosphere, much like the classic horror movies of back in the day. It's much more psychological, hence more scary in my opinion. And the cinematography also adds to that with these long shots down the corridors in the halls of the ship and just showing the outside of the ship beating against the water. And funny enough, another thing that reminded me of The Shining, uh, aside from this film being released in 1980, is the fact that the captain from the luxury cruise liner, which was one of the survivors who made it to this uh, Nazi vessel, ends up becoming kind of possessed by the ship. It kind of takes over him and he becomes like this Nazi captain instead. Which is funny because it's a lot like Jack Torrance in the Overlook Hotel. You know what I mean? How it kind of consumed him. And it didn't completely take over this captain. Like he still has some of his traits. He was a real hard ass on his own ship. And he kind of took his job a little too seriously. While this is kind of going over to his new captain ways. Except... He is much more evil on this Nazi vessel. Like he's trying to go around and kill everybody on this ship. Because this ship runs on blood. And I really like how this whole movie wraps up with the captain. He really gets what he deserves. And it's a real feel good moment when you see what happens to him. You're like, yes. It's just the way it happens is so satisfying. And like I said, this movie isn't very action heavy. But there's still quite a bit of memorable scenes here. Like, we get the girl that ate that candy she found, and then her face gets all, like, full of boils and stuff. She looks right creepy. Pretty good effects on that until she gets choked out. Another really cool scene that's also visually striking is when the chick is taking the shower and it turns to blood. And she's beating in the shower. She can't get out and all that blood's coming down. It looks really intense. It feels claustrophobic because she's locked in this tiny little shower. And of course, when they're going around the ship in the third act and they start finding all of these corpses from the past that were tortured back in the day in World War II, that is done really well. And that's when the movie starts 
getting creepy. It gets under your skin when you start seeing all this shit and you realize what's going on. Like there's literally a room with these corpses still in position of being tortured. Like one in this barrel of like acid and this other one like hung up and stuff. And it's right creepy as hell. And of course there's another room that they go in that's like a freezer and all the bodies are still intact and it's insane. But one thing I'm really mixed on in this film is the acting itself. Uh, it really varies from character to characters. Some people are pretty decent in this flick, like the captain himself, and other ones are pretty cringeworthy, very amateur-like, um, especially like the kids in that in the flick. Uh, they're not the best actors, but I do still enjoy their characters, so that I think that's more important than having good acting, having better written characters, because they're still uh, entertaining to watch. I get a kick out of the boy, little boy that always needs a pee all the time. Like, doesn't matter what situation they're in. But if you're like me, used to watching these lower tier horror flicks, uh, the acting shouldn't bother you too bad. There is much worse out there. And as for negatives, um, I don't think that this film is going to be for everybody. Uh, you really have to be a fan of the horror genre and kind of like these lower tier B horror movies to enjoy this, I think. I think the average... A viewer probably will be turned off by this. It's a little outdated, I will admit. Uh, maybe in 1980, more people would take this more positively. But nowadays, it's really a genre flick. You really have to be a fan like me to get into this. But, like I said, it really helps that I already love ships and ocean liner horror movies. So, this was right up my alley. But, to be fair, the very first time I watched this flick... I did not care for it at all. I gave it a 4 out of 10 and I was highly disappointed. I'm so glad I went and re-watched this because I had a complete change of heart on this viewing. I had a great time from front to finish. It felt like it just flew by the runtime, and I had, yeah, I had a really good time. The only other kind of nitpick negative I have with this flick is at the very first once their cruise liner gets rammed by the freighter and sinks, we end up with a handful of survivors. And they're on this platform in the ocean floating around. And it seems like quite a bit of time passes because it happens at night and it seems like it's early morning. The sun's out and everything. But then the captain comes out of the water out of nowhere, still alive, like, ugh, like unconscious. It's like, how do you survive in the water that long? It just doesn't make any sense to me. They bring him on board and he's just lying there pretty much unconscious on this uh, sheet of wood or whatever that they're surviving on. And I'm like... That doesn't make any sense unless he was already possessed by this point or the ship uh, brought him back to life in the water so that they can bring him on board. I don't know. It doesn't make much sense. I don't like to believe that. I like to believe that he only started to get like possessed by the ship once he got on the vessel. Uh, but, you know, there's different theories online about this. But to me, that part kind of didn't make any sense. But aside from all that, I had a really good time with this flick. Um, I'm thankful that I gave it a rewatch because the first time I watched this, I was just in the wrong mood or something. I had a stick up my ass or something, but the second viewing, I really enjoyed myself. And if I'm going to have to give Death Ship a rating, I'm going to rate it a solid 7 out of 10. I think it's a good haunted ship movie, well, full of atmosphere and mood with some pretty cool scenes woven in here and there. And I like how everything wrapped up in the end. So there you have it guys, there's my quick take on the movie Death Ship from 1980. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out. It's on Tubi for free right now as this review is out. So you can go check that out, at least in Canada anyway, hopefully in the States as well. And until next time guys, thanks for watching.